it's Niall. Welcome back to Niall vs. Mouse. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm in a different location. I am back home in Hawaii. Today is Tuesday. It is Tuesday at exactly 2 2 2 p.m., which is like a good sign I'm taking. Yes, I traveled 13 hours and am now back home in Hawaii. I'm at my mom slash grandma's house, and that is her little doggy here in the background. But yeah, I was determined to continue doing these reading vlogs, which I think I've only ever done one reading vlog where I'm back home in Hawaii. I don't know, like when I'm back home, I'm usually just I, I don't know and just I, I don't know I always feel nervous today's Tuesday I meant to start this video yesterday but I was so jet lagged and just tired and it just wouldn't have been <laughs> very good I decided to pick up the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White I have not started it yet I am in the mood for a fantasy book and this one looks so good I'm not gonna lie the cover and the idea that it's like a King Arthur retelling story is kind of the reason why I decided to pick it up if you haven't watched my previous vlog I just finished reading Call Down the Hawk by Maggie Stavater and that book I'm not ready to talk about it yet so I, I I don't know I'm just ready to like go into like a real a kind of epic uh, higher level fantasy now because that one's set in the real world even though there's so much magic going on if you don't know the Guinevere Deception is supposed to be a King Arthur retelling story where there's this princess named Guinevere who's actually like a fairy changeling or something so she has some sort of power she gets sent to marry King Arthur in order to protect him and his kingdom Princess Guinevere has come to Camelot to wed a stranger the charismatic King Arthur. With magic clawing at the kingdom's border, the great wizard Merlin conjured a solution. Send in Guinevere to be Arthur's wife and his protector from those who want to see the young king's idyllic city fall. I'm super excited. Like I said, I haven't started it yet. I that's a horse. Um, shh, stop it. I haven't started it yet. I'm super excited. It's only 300 pages. And I also, I have the audiobook on Scribd. I had no idea it was on there. Um, so I might go back and forth between the audiobook and the physical book, but we'll see. Oh, also, now that I'm back here in Hawaii, my schedule is different. I work online, for anyone who doesn't know. Um, normally, I work from 9 to 5 when I'm in Denver. But yeah, now that I'm in Hawaii, though, I work from 5 a.m. to 1 p.m., which is awesome because it means I'm done in the afternoon and I have the rest of the day to read and write. Yes, we're still doing NaNoWriMo even though I've been failing at it. I got off of work about an hour ago and um, I kind of had to take an hour just to like decompress and we're gonna get some coffee before we get into this. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be reading the same like paragraph over and over because my eyes are just like, <laughs> Mom, we have a problem. We're out of coffee. <laughs> a fourth of a cup of coffee left in the machine. I do! <laughs> Here in Hawaii, people think it's always sunny, um, which it's not. It's rainy most of the time. Like, we're in the tropics, you know, so unless you're um, close to the coast, even then it, like, it rains all the time. We live pretty inland, so it's, yeah, it's pretty chilly. It's, like, 65, I think, in the mornings, um, and then it kind of slowly warms up throughout the day. Okay, let's get to reading! in the world again. It's been two days since the last time I vlogged and it is currently 11.30 and I am on a lunch break and I'm supposed to be eating lunch but instead I am here to update because I just could not wait to talk about this bookshelf and also the books I'm reading. Um, I decided to read another book. <laughs> I meant to vlog yesterday but my family and cousins and everyone here in Hawaii came over um, and we just caught 
up and it was just the best two days ever so happy like you know how you like you miss people but then like that sort of feeling of missing them gets stronger when you finally see them again after a long period of time you just <laughs> yeah I have been reading and I did get a bookshelf and if you guys can see it is glorious I'm currently in my new room well not my new room it's my Nana's house I'm renting it out um, not the whole house but just this room in the bathroom um, until January since I'll be here for so long and maybe till February I don't know we'll see I just I uh, every time I see my family I'm like I don't want to leave so I might stay longer I don't know we'll see my Nana and my mom were so nice to get me this little bookshelf that was originally in one of the other two rooms in here um, um, but it just kind of had a bunch of old stuff on it and they didn't really need it and they're trying to find a place for it and I was like put it in this little room so I can put all the books that I brought on here that's the only thing when I come home here to Hawaii I just I never really um, get books here I always just leave them in Denver with my dad and now I have books here and it's awesome okay so what am I reading also I just got my eyelashes done if it looks like I have two giant caterpillars on my face um, that is because they are very thick right now and yeah they're going to slowly kind of thin out over the next few weeks um, my mom's friend does eyelash eyelash extensions so I am currently halfway through the Guinevere Deception by Kirsten White and you guys I don't know how I feel about this book. As you guys know, this is a King Arthur retelling story, and I think I mentioned earlier that I am not familiar with the King Arthur stories. I have watched the like 90s uh, animation. Was it? Did it come out in the 90s? I think it came out older than that. But you guys know the King Arthur, the Sword and Stone. Um, yeah, I watched like the Disney animation of it, and so that's like the only kind of vague um, familiarity I have with the story. Which honestly is great because when I'm reading this, it feels kind of like a brand new story, but with just some elements that I'm familiar with. Following our main character who is a magician, I think I said she was a changeling, but I think she's more of like a magician, um, but she definitely has like some fairy something in her because her hair is like a blue black color and she's pretending to be this princess that died that's actually named Guinevere. So she comes in um, pretending to be Guinevere and marries King Arthur in order to protect him from like the something that's trying to get him. Something I did not expect is that the king, King Arthur, he knows that she's, you know, sent there by Merlin to protect him. Um, so he's in on the whole thing. I thought it was going to be one of those situations where like the king doesn't know that she's there to like defend him and he you know she has to like pretend to actually like really like him but no Arthur's in on the whole thing he's like oh you're here to protect me right that was kind of a bummer going into it um he kind of knows that she's there to protect him so it kind of takes away that fun um hidden aspect the other thing going into the first 75 pages of the book is that Guinevere is being sent to protect King Arthur okay she was sent by Merlin um but but apparently she doesn't know what she's supposed to protect the king from like imagine James Bond going on like a secret agent mission but they don't tell him what the mission is I was so surprised when I read that I'm like okay so the king knows that he's she's supposed to protect him but she like no one knows like what they're protecting him from um it's just like she was just sent there and was like all right you're gonna protect him there's some magic darkness but I'm not gonna tell you what it is you're just gonna have to go and hope you don't die. Guinevere is pretty cool. Um, the characters um, are, they're okay. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It's like, I don't feel like, I'm gonna finish the book just because it's so short, but the whole plot, um, just the fact that she doesn't know what she's supposed to be protecting the king from kind of is bugging me a little bit. I mean, we, there is this whole backstory of there having been this like dark queen that Merlin helped defeat and then Merlin was banished from Camelot and now but Merlin and the king are still friends and it just yeah it's a little bit predictable and also I yeah it definitely feels as short as it is and I feel like um I I almost wish there was more detail in it because it's kind of just a very sort of general description of everything and yeah it's all right it's all right I've never read anything by Kirsten White um so maybe this is just like her writing style but um I'm not gonna give an opinion until I finish it there might be like a huge plot twist who knows in the midst of reading that book because I was kind of getting a little bored here 
and there. Um, I decided to pick up this bad boy and you guys, this has to be the cheesiest contemporary. I just, I can't, like maybe it's because I'm 20 years old now, but I have such a hard time reading any sort of high school romance anymore. I read the synopsis of these kinds of books and I'm like, oh, that sounds so cute. And you know, sometimes it really is just really great and I can still relate to it. But a lot of these high school romance books, I just, um, like I just get so frustrated because you know I just feel like it's very immature but again I know I'm 20 years old so obviously it's not written for you know relationships in your 20s it's, it's teenage like love that kind of okay anyways I'm getting off track I digress I'm about 75 pages into this book and I can just say I do not like the main character at all it is one of those books where the main character kind of just like judges everyone um and by everyone i mean just like the one other character in this book who's the boy about to go on this like vacation trip it's snowing outside she's going with all her friends on like a camping trip in cabins or something like that um and anyways she ends up having to use the restroom so before everyone leaves um she goes into the library to use the bathroom and she gets locked in there immediately she starts freaking out and i'm like girl your friends are out there they're gonna obviously come and check on you but Turns out friends are just awful and like don't even bother checking on her and leave to go on this trip without her even though she didn't come back from the bathroom which again okay if I was with my friends and my friend went to the bathroom and she didn't come back I would be freaking out like I would go find her I, would, I automatically I'd be like oh my god someone kidnapped her right but her friends in the book just abandoned her I guess and don't even bother checking on her um so yeah that was the first thing that was I, I was like okay maybe she just has bad friends maybe you know maybe something like that might actually happen she ends up finding out that there's another boy that I guess was in the library and he got locked in there. His name is Dax and immediately she is so mean to him. She assumes that he's like this bad boy because he he he's in like the foster care system which is another big thing. There's this part where he says like oh you know my mom and dad aren't gonna come because my dad you know he left our family and my mom's on drugs um, and he got in trouble once or he went to juvie because he punched um, one of the foster parents he was staying with because the foster parent was abusing the mom so it got really really deep and I was just like oh my god after Dax tells all of this to this girl character her response and I quote that sucks that sucks. Also the other thing, the whole first half of the book that they're locked in there, she thinks that Dax is like hiding a cell phone in his bag because that's the other thing. She doesn't have any of her stuff with her. That's why they can't get out. Um, so she doesn't have a cell phone. So she thinks he's hiding a cell phone and that he's trying to purposely stay in the library that whole weekend because he's like on the run or something like that. So it's like just so weird. Like, you know, like they've only been in the library for half a day and she's already like, we have to ration our food. You know, he's, he's hiding a cell phone, like Hunger Games level sort of like thinking you gotta kind of suspend your own disbelief do you know what I mean like you gotta really just convince yourself that this is possible and then it, it gets better I plan on finishing both of these today and hopefully like one of them will surprise me I mean it's been fun reading them don't get me wrong whenever I read cheesy books um, they're still really enjoyable and entertaining for me. So yeah, they haven't been like a struggle to get through by any means. I will update in a little bit, but before we do that, I want to give you guys a little bookshelf tour. Ta -da -ta -da 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 -da. You can kind of see me in the reflection a little bit. It's an art piece I got here that I kind of just put on top of the books because I thought it looked cool. I went through all the books that are on this shelf currently in my last reading vlog. Those are all the ones that I packed um, in that pink suitcase that I was like trying to fit in there. Um, so yeah, if you guys want more detail as to what all of these books are, you can go check out my last video. It'll go into detail of every single one of these books, but basically these are all the books that were at the top of my TBR list. So Strange the Dreamer, Aurora Rising, Salt to the Sea. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna go through all of these, but I'll do like a quick little a little tour here because it's so beautiful for the first um week that i was here these were all kind of just in my suitcase and i just yesterday got to put them all on this shelf i have a little painting here and some hawaiian books that i got um as well as some notebooks and again i just put like my laptop down here and i usually keep my camera up here so you will be seeing this shelf for the next like two and a half months this is gonna be my new filming mini shelf here i get a four day weekend though from work 
work um, because of Thanksgiving this week. Hoping to go and check out a couple of bookstores around here and kind of give you guys a little bit of a tour. Uh, me and my mom are actually planning on hitting up a couple of bookstores. There's this one bookstore in town. Um, it's kind of like an astrology crystal shop more than a bookstore, but it's so cool. It's called Books and Something. Anyway, so I'm hoping to give you guys like a little tour of that. The lady that works there is so sweet. I'm going to go back to work now and then I will do some reading and update you guys later. very dark <laughs> guys okay so it is later in the day um i just got off work if you hear horses and chickens and goats and animals um that's because i'm just surrounded by animals out here in the jungle and our neighbors all have horses and animals and honestly i love all of those sounds but um i know in videos it can kind of be like what is that background noise anyways okay so by your side by casey west there was a huge kind of i wouldn't say plot twist but just like really random unexpected thing and this book kind of took a dark turn like come 150 pages i really enjoyed that little twist i was expecting it to kind of stay light and fluffy then all of a sudden they were just like here's a dark thing Blech. really good um i can't really tell you what exactly happened but now they're in a different setting um and yeah i'm really enjoying it the main character is getting better she's understanding and realizing her own mistakes in judging our main character so because of that i am liking the main character a little more um i wouldn't say i'm in love with her but you know she's young she's learning you know, you know. I'm going to quickly finish this up, but yeah, I would say maybe right now it's a, a six star book, six out of 10. I wouldn't say it's too much higher, but uh, yeah. Unlike two days ago, I got a new coffee right over here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. We have Pete's Delicious Coffee, and I just bought it two days ago, and already there's only like half the bag of I'm trying to do better and only drinking like a cup and a half, and I don't make it too strong. Um, so yeah, let's make some coffee. Beautiful sky today, huh? Actually, I think I made some this morning. Hold on, there might be some in the pot. <gasps> There's still coffee in the pot. <sighs> Beautiful. how I said that I was starting to like the main character of this book yeah okay I changed my mind again so okay let me um let's just say hypothetically that your friends abandon you <laughs> let's just say they just totally abandoned you and that you got locked in a library and they didn't even bother to check in on you see if you were alive you thought you were gonna die they thought you were dead would you then go back to hang out with those same friends. Girl, you, mm. So yeah, without spoiling anything, um, she's no longer in the library. <laughs> That's pretty much a spoiler. I mean, like this book's pretty predictable, so I feel like it's not too spoilery to say all this stuff. I am towards the end of the book now, and she's out of the library, and she's hanging out with the same group of friends that abandoned her at the library. Real quick though, this book has been so fun to read. Um, not to make you guys think that I'm just like, like hate reading this in any way. Also, one of the guys that she has a huge crush on, his name is Jeff, he was the main one who like basically abandoned her. He, okay, so there was I think like two or three cars that they were all gonna travel in to go camping or go off in the mountains or wherever they were going as a group there was three cars so our main character she put her stuff in the back of this one guy's car his name's jeff and she had a huge crush on him so her plan was to like ride in the car with him on the way to this weekend getaway he's the main the main guy that just totally abandoned her our main character went to go and pee before they all left um and yeah jeff jeff just left 
without her and now it's fast forward a couple days they're out of this whole situation and she still has a crush on Jeff <sighs> Al I don't want to be that mom but I'm gonna be that mom that says girl ch sweetie don't <laughs> He's not the man for you. Anyways, I think I am just, I need a break from this a little bit. Um, I know I'm very close to finishing it, but now I'm going to jump back into uh, the Guinevere deception because I need a little fantasy. It's so weird. Like, I'm more, like, I don't know if anybody else is like this, but when it comes to contemporary books, I automatically, when I start reading it, it's like I believe in nothing. You know, like, it's really hard to suspend my disbelief when it comes to contemporary stories that are set in the real world. But when it comes to fantasy books, like, I will believe anything. You could be like, the sky's green, and I'll be like, oh yeah, the, the sky's green. I know a lot of people it's the other way around. Like, the reason they don't read fantasy is because they just have a hard time believing it. But for me, because I know nothing's real in this world, or it's all made up, um, I just believe everything. I'm going to go back to the Guinevere Deception. I think I might try the audiobook for the Guinevere Deception, because I just found out it's on Scribd. Um, so I will let you know if I jump into the audiobook. <laughs> Day, I may have felt fallen asleep for like 15 minutes. It is currently 6 30 p.m. and it is still super sunny outside, which is nice. It's sun doesn't set till maybe like 7 ish, 7 30 ish. I have finished both books. The one of your deception was it was pretty good. It wasn't like an incredible fantasy book. I will say it was pretty predictable at some points, but the thing that I'm going to give an extra star for um, is the magic in this book. So Guinevere can do different sorts of magic, and a lot of it is pretty unique. Like in the beginning of the book, she puts knots in her hair, or actually she puts knots in the king's hair because the knots um, are like a sort of protective um, magic. But the magic was pretty cool in this book, very unique. Something that was interesting in this book was our main character, Guinevere. She is not a princess at all so throughout the whole book she's having to learn how to adapt and pretend to be Guinevere the princess and she constantly does little things that kind of hint that she's not actually a princess. Overall yeah it was a bit predictable um again I'm not even very familiar with the King Arthur story but overall I kind of saw a lot of the not so much plot twist but just yeah, I had a very easy to follow structure to the point where it was a bit predictable for me. I think I'm gonna give this book five out of 10 stars. I know it's kind of low, it wasn't bad. I mean, I finished it. Um, I didn't end up DNFing it by any means, but yeah, it was a very light fantasy book, I guess you could say. Okay, this bad boy here. I know you guys are waiting for my final thoughts. So I think I'm gonna give By Your Side six out of 10 stars. I was considering giving it seven out of 10 stars just because it was almost comical to read. I'd some part. This is one of those books that it gets better during I guess the last like third of the book. You really kind of see our characters change and grow and mature a little bit. I think I'm gonna give this book 6 out of 10. I'm giving it an extra star because of just how funny some of the scenes were just because of how just like sheer the sheer cheesiness of it was just having me laughing and because of that entertainment value I'm gonna give it an extra star. Anyways until next time keep reading and I will talk to you guys later. Bye!